Good day, YouTube. It is Friday. We have a weekend ahead of us. We are uh, off works Friday evening, and we cleaned out a spot on the bench. What in the world for? That just seems craziness. Oh, I didn't clean the whole bench, so I'm not that crazy. Just a little bit, so we could work on something. And just like that, we're in the step van. Um, this is my rack. Oh, wait. Let me turn the lights down. Sorry, I'm just showing off a little bit. Um, this is my rack in the step van audio equipment. And I'm going to make some changes. Um, I'll show you what's going on. These two PV amplifiers. I love them. I love the look. This is a PV mixer. I have a PV microphone. I'm a PV fan. Look at this. Yeah. Get it up where you can see it. Anyway, I'm a PV fan. Most people know that by now. All my speakers are PV. I'm not sure what's in here. Um, there's a couple there. There's a couple there. But the reality is I would like to keep the step van to where I could use the batteries and inverter. I'm not sure what you can see because I don't have the floor done. There's four group 27 deep cycle batteries there and an 1800 watt inverter. That is one way I can power this equipment. Everything. What I have is very simple um, three or four ways to power it. It's right now it's plugged into shore power which there's an outlet on the outside of the step van right now. It's just plugged into an um, outlet in my shop. I could also use that same cord outside that's plugged into the shop to plug into a portable Honda generator. One of my small ones, or even the EU3000 there. That's the second way. Third way is to take that plug and move it over to the front receptacle. And it is tied, or will be tied when I get that wire finished, to a 4,000 watt Honda generator that is built into this box. It is um, out of an RV. It's an RV generator. And it starts and stops with this uh, station here. Sorry, it's gonna be really dark. There we go. That uh, start stop station's got an hour meter and stuff on it. That's one of the other ways that we can power it up the last way, fourth way. I just simply take that plug and plug it into this inverter and turn it on, which it's it's always hooked up, ready to roll. Ready to roll. So, back to the amplifiers. As much as I love the way these sound and I love the way they work, they don't give me any substantial, noticeable performance increases over these Electro Voice EV7100s. This is a uh, supposed to be a 400 watt and these are about 300 watt and i i honestly can't get any more out of these than i can out of these these are power hogs these are old school i love them to death but trying to keep um, the power usage down in this step van so that i can run on the inverter as much as possible and on the batteries and if i were to run both of those, I would max out the inverter and the batteries would last, you know, an hour or two. Well, that's not long enough. With these, and I've already done it, I can run all day with one of them running. With two, I can run most of a day, probably six, seven hours, and that would be ideal. So it saddens me greatly, but I'm going to pull these two out. I'm going to move these two up, and uh, yesterday I purchased two more, just like it, EV7100s. And so I'll have, my first four amplifiers will be EV7100s, and I believe that will complete the ensemble here. This will um, stack the rack, if you will. Um, so that's what's coming. Um, I don't know if I'll get to that this weekend or not. Um, if I turn on the power conditioner here, I can turn on, just making sure all this functions. I think I hit the button twice. Yeah, power on. Let's turn that back off. The problem I have is I purchased this 
equalizer to DBX. 231, I believe. Yeah, 231. Which is a double 31 channel stereo equalizer. And uh, no bueno. No work, no power up. I fiddled with it, I fiddled with it, and I fiddled with it. Um, I can't get anything to work. Nothing works, it doesn't power up. So, this is going to be today's adventure is to pull this out of the rack throw it up on the bench take it apart and see if we can make it work it simply doesn't power on i'm hoping it's very simple like a fuse or something um i purchased that from a guy that um buys storage units and he had a bunch of audio stuff he advertised a couple of them i got a hold of them and he goes, I got a bunch of stuff. I really don't know what it is. I said, well, let me come out and look at all of it. And maybe we can package it up. I did. I did package it up. And I got a pretty good deal. I probably paid around $50 for that. I didn't test anything from this guy. Everything worked. This was the last thing. I, I never had a use for it yet um, until I could get it put in a rack like I've got here. Now it's in a rack. I want to use it. And nothing. It does not work. So... Let's uh, take a moment. Let's get it pulled out of here, unhooked, unplugged, and get everything disconnected. And we'll throw it up on the bench, take it apart, and let's see if we can be lucky again. Last weekend, we took apart um, Yamaha-powered mixer. Um, that one there, <laughs> still sitting there. I am in the test mode. I'll test it all weekend. There's another one there. And I have many of them in here. Let me move the... Yeah. Generator out of the way. Because I keep a bunch of them in here. Oh, yeah. No light again. You made me turn it down. Wait, let me turn the lights up. Possibly. There'll be enough light to see by. This is. Gotta be careful. Things might fall out of here. Yeah, this is where the other powered mixers are. So this one here is a Yamaha. Wow, it's really dark, and I've got a flashlight and everything. That's a Yamaha. This is a Brand X. Um, that's a Yamaha. That's a Yamaha. So one, two, three. There's one in the Scooby Van. Four, five, six on the table out there. So I got about six of them. Um, other stuff in here. It's a hundred foot snake, twenty four channel with four returns. Uh, FM transmitter, a bunch of stuff. And another rack mount piece of equipment I need to pull out and put in the rack. So, without further ado, let me get to taking this stuff apart. I'll catch you when we get inside and start taking that equalizer apart. And uh, we'll start checking for power and see when we lose it. Hopefully it's just a few something easy. And we'll get it back together and get it working again. Alright, so we got it taken apart. This thing utilizes a cord like a computer does, or you know, a, a desktop computer does. So, because we're troubleshooting here, let's start with the obvious. Let's just check the cord. Um, I just have a regular just digital multimeter. Should be in the 115, 120 volt range. 118. That'd be good. All right, let's plug it in. This thing lights up on my screen. Now, it's hot, right? So everything's hot. I've got this thing laying on a rubber mat and a blue towel. I sort of need to lay it down. Sorry if you lose sight of the meter, but um, you want to get zapped, so be careful. And if you zap something on this PC board, it's a good chance it's over. All right. So second thing we're going to check is make sure the power comes from the socket where it plugs into the switch and through the switch because it could be just a switch i think for the moment let's unplug it because we can check this with an ohm meter we don't need to check it with a voltmeter first we will but we don't need to do it first so let's unplug it powers off Yo. So, uh, let's just go to uh, ohms. Sorry, I have a bunch of different meters. Now I just got to look at these things. 
uh, to see what's what right there. Put the leads together, make sure they zero out. They do. So we're checking switch. Now we'll turn the switch on. The switch appears to function. Now that we know it appears to function, let's see if it'll pass a voltage through it. So we're going to leave the load side of the switch undone, making sure you can see. The load side of the switch that goes to this uh, step-down transformer, leave it unplugged. We're going to plug back in the power side of the switch in the middle. We're going to plug it back in. It's now hot. When you go back to AC voltage on our meter and check it. So we'll just check it against the ground for the moment. The switch is on. We should get a current or you know 120 volts through it, and we do. So now we go to the power supply here. Let's unplug it, let's plug it back in. Power's off. We'll plug our switch back in. I'm going to make one more test. I plugged that in, but just a little ways. We'll plug the power back in. It's now hot. Let's see. A switch with no load on it could give you a voltage all the way through it, but the moment you put a load on it, it goes away. It's like points in an old car. If you watch them, they're working and they're sparking. They should work, right? But when they come together, they don't actually conduct enough current to do any good. And that's what might be happening here. Let's check that next. We are trying to energize this power supply so it would draw a little bit of power. If the contacts in that switch are gunny bag, it may not make contact. So we're going to ground one into this. We're going to check for voltage, and we're good. Unplug, power's off. We're going to finish plugging that all the way in. So, as far as we know, the switch is good. And we're going on to the power supply. Going to have to look and see if I can see what voltage to expect at the power supply. Double checking, it's unplugged. What do I see? Hmm, very interesting. I'm really not sure um, what I can read there. Let's unplug the secondary of this. Which seems to have three wires on it. Alright. Let's plug it back in and see what we get. We'll leave it on AC side because there's nothing here that tells us this is DC. Or there would be diodes or something on it, some sort of a rectifier, and there is not. So we're still AC. My meter's set still for AC. Let's see if we can pick up something on the secondary side. I'm trying to land this somewhere where I can pin it down like this. Don't short it together. I'm going to have to move this so I can see it. Nothing there. Nothing to speak of there. Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. 
I got nothing across this guy. Interesting. Well, let me uh, shut you down for a minute. I'm going to unbolt this and uh, start seeing what I can see here. Don't know what's going on yet. We'll figure it out. Okay, so I pulled this thing out. I don't know if the camera will focus on it or not. There we go, right about there. This thing evidently is two 18-volt power supplies in one. The white is common, and each blue wire is its own 18-volt power supply at 0.65 amps each. So, um, for checking coils, I mean, this is a wound coil in an iron core, supposedly. I wasn't going to rip it apart if I didn't tell I'm done testing on it. So, we could check the primary... And we can check the secondary coils and make sure, or at least find out, which ones are bad. Or confirm that they are bad. So let's do the primary first. And that's just by simply putting an ohmmeter across the two wires. And then on the secondary side, between the white and the blue on this side. And then between the white and the blue on the other side. Um, if the coils are complete, they're not burned out and separated we will get a resistance across them. If they're open, we will not. So, let's try the primary first. If I can do this, make me get my little clips out. Ooh, look at that. Ouch, that hurt. Nothing. Checking our meter. Let's test the secondary for fun. We got nothing on the primary, so we already know that's the problem. But they shouldn't all be bad. I don't know if my meter's getting in there or not. Really, nothing? That would be unusual. Hmm. Very odd. Well, Hmm. Wonder what the chance of me finding this thing is online. Let me go do a little uh, playing on a computer. I'll let you know what I find. All right, just uh, checking my meter settings. We'll check this one more time. Um, see if you can see that. I just grabbed this uh, cell phone charger. See if you can uh, see the meter in the screen there. Um, because it's nothing but a little power supply, right? It's from 120 volts down to 5.5 or whatever cell phones charge at. And it has, should have, a resistance across it, and it does. About an ohm and a half or so. Half an ohm, something like that. But we know that coil is good in there. So we come back to the power supply again. I can get that in there. Primary side is nothing, but the secondary side, I was saying, was highly unusual for nothing, but a just wasn't getting all the way in there. The secondary side coils are okay. It has a resistance. We don't know what it's supposed to be, but it has. The primary side of this coil is junk. 
Now, if you were an extreme do-it-yourselfer, you could take that apart. You could unwind it, count the coils. There are thousands. And you could rewind that, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go try to find one. I just thought I'd come back and show that when I realized I didn't have my meter set properly. That's what happens when every meter you have is different. All right. Let me go look around on the computer. Let me see what I can find. Well, gang, I had all kinds of luck on the internet hunting for this power supply, but none of it was good. Nope. There was one uh, blog question from someone five years ago hunting for one of these, and uh, he was unsuccessful. So let's go into the manual, which I happen to have printed out recently. See if there's a schematic in here. Um, that thing says it is essentially two 18.8 volt outputs. I was kind of hoping there was a schematic in here. That might tell me something. What the heck? Oh, let me see if it's in a different stack. All right, we fast forwarded to a Saturday. Saw us already Saturday afternoon, as a matter of fact. Had a couple things to do this morning. Um, went up in my stash upstairs and uh, almost forgot I had this. This is what we call a Variac. It's a variable AC transformer. So the power supply is bad. We metered it. We know it's bad. I did a little more checking on it today. Guaranteed, it's bad. It's not going to come back. Um, so why don't we test the rest of the piece of equipment? I cannot buy that exact power supply online anywhere. There was one discussion from five years ago. Somebody else was looking for one. He never found it either. So let's cut our losses looking for that. Let's see if we can just change it out for an 18-volt uh, with enough capacity uh, transformer. I just buy a generic transformer online and hopefully it'll be good. We can test the theory um, with this Variac. So what we can do, can you see the meter okay? Yeah. Except for AC volts, it's off. This is uh, where you plug in whatever it is you're going to use for testing purposes and uh, we'll zero it out we'll turn it on and then we'll slowly ramp this up 7 volts 8, 9, 10 11, 12 15 18 and it actually said 18.8 .8. I don't think it's uh Super critical we nail it on the nut, but there's 18.7 volts right there. Turn that off. All right. Now, now that we know that is set, let me get a setup going here, and we'll put 18.7 volts um, where there used to be a uh, transformer. Um, that went bad. Hang on. Okay, I have the uh, leads from the Variac uh, wire nutted to both of the 18 volt AC inputs to the rest of the power supply and a neutral just kind of wire nutted on there as safely as you can everything's not touching anything it shouldn't and uh, we'll see the switch isn't going to matter because all of this is isolated so as soon as I turn the Variac on this thing should power up I'm going to remain a reasonable distance back in case there was something that was on here that caused the original power supply to blow in the first place. We could have an issue. So I'll leave my finger on the switch until we know it's clear. If it smokes, then I saved myself some money. I didn't buy another transformer yet. But if it works, then I know what the next step is, is to buy a transformer. And we can put it back together with a different transformer than it came with. All right, are we ready? Switch on. Switch on. I didn't see anything light up. 
But then again, I don't know exactly what would or wouldn't light up. But something ought to go. All right, I might have to test it. But we're not having much luck, I can tell you that. I have a setup, uh, that mixer we fixed, and a speaker over there. I've got an input into, get you up here, into the equalizer from the rear. Being real careful here, because things are hot. Um, I have a stereo input, one on each side from my tablet. Um, I went around it and plugged it directly into the amp and everything works fine. Playing music you can't hear right here anyway. Um, but uh, not functioning. Um, it's got an EQ bypass which should allow the music to go through unaffected by the equalizer and go you know, straight from the input to the output, um, which is on channel one on the powered mixer and nothing is going through but static. Um, so we're starting to run out of options here to make this a affordable repair. Um, you can pick these up used every day for $150 or something. Um, new, I think they're around $300 or something. We're just kind of hunting for a loose joint now. These ain't going to matter. So I think we're going to give up on her. Probably keep it for parts, knobs, and slides and something. This is a very popular EQ. I'll probably seek another one similar to it. But something caused power supply to fail. To overheat or... Whoa! Uh... Hang on, let me turn on something you can hear. All right. I have a lot of noise coming through this too, so. I have two pairs of PBSP5s, and one of the horns wasn't working by the end of the What the world? Really? I didn't mark which speaker was bad, so I need to figure out which one wasn't working. Pull it apart. Playing my own Pull videos, by the way. Should Trying to find something in the non-metallic 22 uh, diaphragm or something. But you never know if I haven't had these apart, I buy these used. If I haven't had them apart, what, you know, somebody might have put something different in them and I need to return them to what I call stock. So let me pull these out and figure out which one is it working. And uh, get the parts coming. And we'll fix it. See you in a sec. So, is it really working? Alright, this is the one that doesn't uh, work. Let's take it apart together and find out what's wrong with it. Why don't I get the right size nut driver? Hang on. Okay, I'm going to fiddle here for a little bit. Never even happened. Wow. Alright, I'm going to... There's the bypass, so it's passing through. I don't know why I'm getting so much noise in it. If you worked on made in China speakers, pretty much these were all wood speakers. I'm going to turn the power off to it, see if it passes. It does not. Yes. Back to power. And this is a 22 right. driver. Let me it play with it for a while, I'll get back to you. This is not going to come. All right. Oh, and the neighbors mowing their grass. Great. It's a little different shape. So, I'm, all this noise that's coming through is from the Variac, okay? Um, yeah. I have.
have half a mind to put the power supply back in. Because quite honestly, this morning when I cut the leads off of it, I tested it again and I got connectivity through it that I didn't get with the leads on it. Like maybe I could just rebuild the leads kind of deal. That's why when I cut this out, I left them long enough to reuse as I was fiddling with stuff. I did kind of <laughs> cut some of the wrap off of it. Um, mm, interesting. Well, it's certainly worth a shot. I'm going to stick it back in for fun now that we got everything kind of where it's supposed to be. One of them deals. I'll be back. All right, gang, I put that power supply back in for fun. Um, it doesn't work it's still. <laughs> Nothing. So there were two things going on here. One, that transformer was bad. Number two, that ribbon cable connection needed to be remade. Um, the noise we're getting through the amplifier is that noisy variac. Um, but it did prove that the power supply was bad and power supply, the transformer of the power supply is bad. And now I need to see about getting another one, but it's really going to need to be, you know, electronics grade. I can find 18 volt, you know, 120 to 18 volt AC transformers, but you know, we're talking like doorbell stuff. I'm afraid they're gonna be just as noisy is that and that's not acceptable so to find a quality transformer might be tough it also might be cost prohibitive um, you know these things really don't have that much value I can just buy another one so with that I'm not really sure which direction I'm going to go to repair it we know it's repairable by replacing the power supply and it's gonna work it's gonna work fine everything I tried while the thing was running works smoothly quietly um, it would be worth repairing if I could find a power supply for say $30 or $30 $40 range something like that I'd probably pick one up if not I'll throw it upstairs market parts and you know these things are pretty popular it's a good chance I'll end up with another one and maybe it'll need uh, knobs or something you can see some of the little white doodads are gone off of even some of these that would make one complete you know if a knob was missing or something pick it up cheap use this for parts so with that i think we'll end this video because i don't know if or when i will repair this um but this was a fun little project um yeah, i'm by no means a computer computer a electronics expert but you know i've been an electrician for nearly 40 years so I have a lot of experience with electrical circuits and that is the basis for my troubleshooting beyond that electrical components and so forth I'm not going to get too crazy about those because they'll you basically got to take them out of the circuit to test them anyway and there's a million of them in there who'd want to do that unless you got all winter to work on this thing and I'm not spending that kind of time on anything so there you go gang Appreciate you watching. Um, appreciate the comments. I read them, uh, most of them. I reply back to many of them as I can. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up button to help others uh, get suggested this video to watch. So with that, we'll catch you guys next time. Well, gang, uh, we're going to keep this thing rolling a little bit. Um, I did a different search on eBay. I just searched for 18-volt transformer, and look what I found. This is so close to the one that's in there. It's not the same brand or anything. Slightly different, but mostly the same. It has two 18-volt outlets at over one amp apiece, so it's got more uh, capacity than the one that was in it. Um, it's an audio power transformer that has static shield between the primary and secondary coils to improve the isolation and noise interference. So, you know, when I was running it on the triac, you know, it's very, very noisy. But it did prove that the rest of the piece of equipment works. 
and it works good. So, um, like I said, I'd invest 30 bucks in it, and this thing's coming in at uh, $26. So, uh, let's get her bought. It'll be here on Thursday. Yeah, I gotta sign in. Um, and uh, we'll put this thing back together and uh, make it work. So, one more segment here in a few days, and we'll complete the video. All right, we're gonna fix it yet, guys. All right, the power supply, or I keep calling power supply, a transformer has arrived for the uh, equalizer. Wow, it's a lot bigger than the other one. Looked like the same size on the picture. Yeah, right. Um, I, I'm in uncharted territory here because I've never seen this before. Um, I'm going to, and there's no paperwork that came with this thing. So, we might just blow it up here or something, I don't know. I'm going to assume that the black and red are the 120 volt side. I do not know what the purple is. I don't have a clue. So, I think I'm just going to safe it off. I don't know what else to do with it. And then, this had a, a 18 volt side of it was basically tied two together and the two blues were two 18 volts. So I assume that what we're going to do on this side is tie the greens together and we'll have two 18 volt outputs here. So I'm really just going to cut these back and uh, tag on to here. I was going to solder these up, but you know, what if it's wrong? Um, so I think we'll just wire nut them in. It's not to say we can't wire nut them in, get the thing working. I really want to put it back in the rack. I wouldn't mind using it for a gig I have coming up in two days. So let's uh, put these together. We'll just cut them a little shorter. Yeah, they could just fall on the floor. And then we'll just tie these together and uh, do a bench test on it. This uh, transformer, according to its tracking information, was arrived at my house a week ago tomorrow. However, it did not. It didn't come. I tracked it every day, and it just says it was dropped off on my porch. But it wasn't. It's like the third or fourth package that this has happened to. So I waited all the way through the weekend... I waited till yesterday afternoon, which was Monday. Again, it was dropped off according to the internet. Tracking information said it was dropped off on Wednesday. And by Monday, I hadn't seen it. So, I reordered another one. And then when I got home yesterday, Monday, it was on my porch. Great. So now I spent another $26 on one I don't need. So I reached out to the seller same seller asked if i could stop the order and i haven't had a chance to check on it yet but if i blow this one up <laughs> right now because uh, no paperwork i guess i could uh, use the next one we'll hook it up different why wouldn't they label anything or put a piece of paper in here with a diagram on it saying what's what I'm making assumptions here based on the old one, but there is nothing here. I don't get it. All right. Less talking, more wiring. We'll wire nut it together. She'll be fine. This purple one, though, I don't know what that is. So, I'm just going to, come on, we'll do that, we'll stick a wire nut on it, and then we'll do the hot side, again tying them together, we'll cut off some of the excess, Anybody doing the no shave November thing? Something just happening on at work. 
I'm letting her go for a month. Didn't shave for about a week. Don't know if I can go the whole month or not. We'll see. There's a few people trying it. Ooh, that one flew up here. Out with the old broken one. I'm going to have to bore a hole through here because I got this bolt assembly um, to replace this little one. I hope I can just snap that stud off and drill a new hole and go from there. Uh-oh. I dropped something I shouldn't have. There it is. Excuse me. Drop my wire. Alrighty. We don't really have a hot and a neutral here because a neutral is a grounded conductor. And that is not what we have here. We have a difference in potential, not a grounded conductor. So we simply have 120 volts going in and 18 coming out. There is no neutral. There is no... Because there is no grounded conductor. All right, last wire. Then it's bench test time. I'm going to have to... I've still got some test equipment here, so we'll be able to test it out. All righty. I should clean up my bench. I'm getting less and less workspace. <laughs> Uh, so many projects, so little time. Should just take a day off and clean this place. All right, let's plug us back in. All righty. Hot goes on the switch. This does connect to the neutral connection coming in from the cord. There. I'm not going to hook this up to any audio equipment until we think it functions correctly. No sense of blowing something else up. Alright, power off. Let's plug it in. Smoke test. If it contains its smoke, it must be good. If it lets all the smoke out, uh, it's not so good. All right. Step back. Ready, set, go. Lights are on. Lights are on. That's a good thing. All right. I'll uh, get something hooked up here, and we'll play something. Then as I started to build, you can see all I can do is play my own videos, so I don't I get in trouble not to pull with YouTube. Any from the but no, it's working good. I can purchase everything again. Bypass the EQ. The step band. See if I can cut it up this direction. Now the EQ is bypassed. I only have a few uh, frequencies and up. So I have two EV seventy one hundreds in the Get step some flicker. Band. And then I have a couple of PV amps and low cut. A couple other brands. If I hit this, it'll pick up the volume a lot. All the more power, advertised power, than these. All the slides are static free. And we're looking good. So, let me, uh, but they're compact. turn that down. Okay. Everything works. Both sides. It's still running. I just turned the amplifier down. So all I have left to do is uh, I'm going to bust this stud off of here. Come down here and drill a hole so this thing will fit. It's got a much bigger mount. That bolt head will stick through the other side, but that'll be fine. I will stick this back together and put it back in the rack. So a successful repair. All right. Again, I'm not an expert at this whole electronics thing. I've uh, been an electrician you know, my life, second generation, so I get circuits and things like that. Um, so some of this stuff to me is repairable and some of it's certainly beyond my limits. But here we found something else we could fix and that's good. Um, I'll...
be happy to uh, put this in service this week and uh, use it. So, gang, I appreciate you watching my videos. Uh, please give the videos a thumbs up if you would, please. It helps others uh, get directed to my videos and more people that watch, the better off we are. So, without further ado, I'll see you on the next one. All right, it's all back together. Let's go put it in. Well, it's nice to have the equalizer back in the rack. If you wanted just a quick rundown, little bonus footage there. We have a six Electro Voice wireless microphone receivers. A quick little power conditioner. A Carver home theater system. It is actually hooked to the studio monitors in the step band to the rear to the rear um, equalizers back in um, we have a crossover here which I uh, will use on Thursday to uh, run my subs there actually one of those PV subs is sick actually I'm gonna completely rebuild both of them so I take the broken one out and I've got a a small one. I think it's a 15, but um, we'll run two different kind of subs. Um, got a little preamp here. Um, it's a DI Pro here. We have now five Electro Voice EV7100 amplifiers and then a couple other amps down there. Um, these are my more energy efficient. This is what we put in over the weekend. So gang, thanks again for watching, commenting, subscribing. Catch you next time.